This video will be a comparison and a summary of the adiabatic and or isothermal expansion and compression of ideal gases. So from the ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT, pressure times volume equals number of moles of gas times gas constant times temperature. We can see that the temperature of an ideal gas is PV over nR. So if we have a closed system, in a closed system we can't exchange matter with the outside universe or the surroundings. So the number of particles and thus the number of moles of particles is going to be constant. And similarly the gas constant R is also a constant. So the things in the denominator here are a constant. So if we have some initial temperature for our system and then it goes to a final temperature and it's an ideal gas, the result that we have is that the pre final pressure times the final volume divided by the initial pressure times the initial volume is is this ratio here. So T final over T initial equals PFVF over PIVI as you are probably familiar with from general chemistry. Okay so we're gonna look at what this implies for how various quantities change in isothermal versus adiabatic processes. Alright for an isothermal process the temperature doesn't change, iso, same, thermal, temperature. So TF over TI equals 1 because they're the same. So PF, VF over PI, VI is equal to 1. So this means for a reversible isothermal expansion or compression of an ideal gas, we have the initial pressure times initial volume equals the final pressure times final volume of that ideal gas. Uh, conversely, for adiabatic processes, an adiabatic process is one in which there is no heat. So d when our system expands or compresses and does work, it, exchange, it exchanges energy with the surroundings. And that energy is going to result in an increase or a decrease in the temperature of our gas. So f the, the relationship we derived from the previous video on adiabatic processes is that the quantity final temperature over initial temperature to the power minus constant volume heat capacity divided by the gas constant is equal to the final volume divided by the initial volume. So using this equation and th these equations up here, I can rearrange this to show, because this is equal to that, that the final volume over the initial volume to the negative R over CV bar so I've just multiplied both sides by the, I've taken both sides to the uh, minus R over CV bar power, so it's moved over here. And then this is equal to that. So what we have is uh, VF over VI to the minus R over CV bar equals PF VF over PI VI. Now once you cross multiply and rearrange all the proper terms to get everything arranged, what you get is that the initial pressure times the initial volume to the power 1 plus R over CV bar equals the final pressure times the final volume to the power 1 plus R over CV bar. And that is for the reversible adiabatic expansion or compression of an ideal gas. So using those equations and what we've already learned about adiabatic and isothermal processes, we can say how various quantities change during isothermal and adiabatic expansion or compression. So delta U for isothermal processes is zero because the heat cancels out the work, whereas for adiabatic processes the temperature changes, so the change in internal energy is the constant, is the constant volume heat capacity times the change in temperature Tf minus T initial. The work for isothermal processes is minus nRT log V final over V initial, which is which is canceled out by the heat for isothermal processes, which is plus nRT log V final over V initial. For adiabatic processes, the work that we do is just the total change in energy for the system since there's no heat, CV times TF minus TI. There's also no heat done in adiabatic processes, so that's a zero. For isothermal processes, the temperature doesn't change, so the final temperature just equals the initial temperature. 
And if I rearrange all these equations to get what my final temperature is, I get that the final temperature in adiabatic processes is the initial temperature times the final volume over the initial volume taken to the power of minus r over Cv bar. So we'll remind ourselves from the previous video that we have to take into account what type of ideal gas we're dealing with to get our constant volume molar heat capacity, which is the partial derivative of internal energy with respect to temperature divided by the number of moles evaluated at constant volume. So Cv bar divided by R for a monatomic ideal gas is 3 halves. So 3 halves R for monatomic. Cv bar for a diatomic or linear ideal gas is 5 halves R. And for a nonlinear polyatomic molecule, it is 6 halves or 3 R.